All right, here's the situation. So I've got this uh, nice old pocket watch. It's not a high-valued pocket watch. It's uh, got about seven jewels in it, and it's for a friend. And I got the pocket watch running. Let me just move the balance cock over here. Um, it was dirty as heck, and I got the pocket watch running, and it would run flat like this. And I'd turn it over, and it would run flat. I'm not going to put it down, but flat like that, no issue. And it's a uh, American Waltham pocket watch. Uh, it's old. Um, and when I stood it up like this, in this position here, pen and up position, um, it would die, and it would sound like a 900-year-old engine just starting to to lose its vigor. So pretty bad. So I said, okay, I can't, I can't, um, I can't deal with that. So I let down the. Um, the tension on the mainspring by holding pressure on here and then just moving this aside so that was done this has already been cleaned and it was actually running quite well like that so so I had a look at the um, at the balance cock to see if there were issues right now, I couldn't really see any issues with the jewel but I was just glancing from the top but and then probably you can't see this but when I looked at the uh, the balance here I could see that the uh, the roller um, with the uh, impulse jewel there. The impulse jewel was actually at an angle, so it was just slightly off. So if you looked at, uh, if you drew this on a piece of paper, let me just get a piece of paper out here and show you. So if I had the impulse jewel, see if this pendant actually works here. There we go. So there's the roller table like this. Um, there's a little bit of a U here on the roller table. And then it goes around like that. Right? And then the jewel is here. There's a hole for the jewel. It's kind of like a happy face. Like that. And the jewel is here and it's normally sitting like that and it's completely flush with this this groove here right and this prevents it from over or getting caught over banking or, or uh, not over banking but uh, I can't remember the term anyway when the the jewel impulse jewel ends up on the other side of the opening of the um, pallet fork so I'll show you that in a second so so that's if the jewel is swinging around and ends up in the other end. So the uh, pallet fork itself has a little tiny spike that comes up here and it prevents this from basically when the when this is swung over this way here um, you you can't get the jewel into the uh, opening of the pallet fork unless it's all lined up. So I'm not going to get into that anyway. So, <clears throat> so the problem is when I uh, looked at the impulse jewel, if I look at this as a big picture. Let's just draw this like this, like that, and then the circles like this, and it goes around like that, and of course it goes all the way around like that. The jewel looked like it, and I'll exaggerate it a bit, but it was at a bit of an angle like that. So now that, when when the jewel, the impulse jewel ends up going into the pallet fork, and the pallet fork goes like this, like that and then it goes there's an opening I'll just draw it like this and like that and they're not all like the same but pretty much like this and like that and there's an opening right and then here's that piece of metal that comes up that I can't remember the name of apologize sometimes you forget stuff and the jewel is supposed to sit in right here when it swings around so when this is dot 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 and then dot 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 and then dot 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 and actually it's a little higher up and it goes around like this right and then the jewel fits in right in here right sort of like a happy face a U and then like that so if this is actually at an angle like that then it's not going to release it properly um, from from one of the one or two of the sides now it's not that extreme but what I'm going to do here I looked at the jewel it looked like it wasn't put in very well it also looks too small so what I'm going to do is take that jewel out um, 
find another jewel and then replace it and shellac that back into position and I'm going to try to videotape all that so again the uh, roller table would go up like this and I'm just doing some dot dot dots here and then like that and it would go on like that and then the jewel would be sitting right here and it's got to be the exact measurement minus I think 0 0.01 millimeters on 0 0.02 millimeters I think on either side um, and so to measure that pellet fork opening I got this neat little tool here and what you do is you the mouth of the pellet fork you take one of these jobby doos and this is a gauge and it is um, ever decreasing in size I think and you fit that gauge into the opening so the gauge the f the thickness is on the edge here so from this side to this side is how thick that gauge is so down here it's super thin up here it's super thick so you use this gauge to uh, do it so <clears throat> and it's uh, got a number on the side which is in I believe in millimeters so this would be um, point point three four millimeters I believe um, so I'm doing the old I believe things it's a Victor gauge so what I do is the first thing I do is I'm going to have a look at this this here and I'm going to see if I can there's the pallet fork there as you can see right and then what I do is I take the gauge and I see which size fits in there so I'm gonna just <coughs> see if I can do it while you're watching here so what I do is I fit the gauge in there okay, that actually fits nicely and I would take a look at it from the top too and that is I think a little bit wide so I go to the next gauge and that's a point point three four so I'm gonna go two over and see what happens this is like the price is right so you do one and then you go do another one so I'm gonna just move the camera around a bit here so hopefully you can see this and I'm gonna fit this in there and that actually fits so that's two more up and let me look at the opening there and there's too much end shake on that one so I'm gonna go two more up and now I'm up to a point three two and again Hopefully I'm not overdoing the audio here, but I do like the golf game thing. And fit that in there. And this fits as well. And that's point three two. So I'll go to point I'm gonna go one more up from three two, which would be three four. It goes in increments of two. So there's point three, point three four, as you may or may not be able to see. I don't know. Okay, anyway, it's point three four. And what I do is I check the opening with point three four. And I want to get one that just barely fits here. Well, that's way too much play. What the heck is going on here? I'm going to just go up to 0.36. Maybe I had a fatter one in there earlier. I think I did. I'm going to go completely fat here. 0.38. Again, hard to do with a camera pointing at you. So 0.38 fits in very nicely. And then point. Next one is point. It would be point four zero. There's point four zero, and then I look in here and I fit in point four zero. See if that fits. And point four zero fits. Not a lot of play here. 
getting pretty tight. And I'll bet you any money, 0.42 doesn't fit. Well, I don't want to bet you any money, but I'll bet you 0.42 doesn't fit. Let me have a look at this again. Oh, 0 0.42 fits, but not very well. It's fitting, but again, it's pretty... I can looking down on it, and I see very zero zero play here. So I would probably go 0 0.40. If I go up one more here, you just I'm doing this with one hand so it's not easy. 0 0.42, 0 0.44. Okay, here's 0 0.44. All doing this with one hand again, like I said, just so I can get it on video. And oh my god, 0 0.44 fits. Holy crap, that's just barely fitting. 0.44, let me put this down for a second. And I'm going to go 0.46. Holy jeez, I didn't think 0.44 would fit. Let me zoom in here a bit more. Is this going to zoom for me? Yeah, there we go. So this is 0.46, I think. Point four six fits. All right, I'm way off here. Point four eight. Let me just do this really fast without showing you. All right, point four eight doesn't get to the back. And let me go back to point four four and have a look. So that would point four four fits, but it's really tight. I'm gonna look at point four two and see what that looks like from the top. Point four two and let me have a look at that. Yeah, that's much better. There we go. So that's 0.42. Let's see, see if I can zoom this here. Is this going to zoom for me? There we go. And that's 0.42. There we go. The uh, puck is in the net, folks. 0.42 fits. Geez, my fingers look all ratty here. Um, got a guitar gig coming up. So, I got the cuticle central. When you get the old camera up fat, close on your fingernails and cuticles, they don't look so good. But, that's too bad. Anyway, so point four two wins. So, and if I look at this, I'm just going to eyeball the balance here. And, and you probably won't be able to see the um, the jewel, but if I just eyeball this, I don't want the balance to fall off. That's not something you want to have happen. I want to eyeball the thickness of that jewel and see, and it's about the same as it's the same about the same thickness as the end here. So 0.42. So. It looks like it's the right thickness, but what I don't like is the angle on that. So what I have to do is punch this uh, this off. So I got to punch the um, basically punch the roller table off the balance staff. So, but what I want to do first is take off the um, the balance here. Because I don't want to break anything. Let me have a look and see how this is attached. And I've taken this off before. Because I put this into the um, ultrasonic cleaner. To uh, clean it up. It was rusty and everything. 
so it was kind of poopy so again I uh, I don't work as well I think when the camera's on but I'm just gonna turn that just a bit now I'm gonna do just turn this around and then poke the uh, poke it out very carefully I think it just pokes out here there we go so that's out I can also examine the jewel on the the uh, balance cock as well to make sure that thing is absolutely round and I have what I do is I take this device here this camera I got this off of AliExpress and it's you clip that on your iPhone and then you put it over the part like this and you can zoom in really close uh, like this actually you can zoom in really close this is a light but it's a little LED light but it's uh, got two modes it's got funky blue mode and then it's got white mode which is like that which helps light the part up when you do that so that's pretty handy so if you, if you need to do something like that but the first thing I want to do here is take a look at the balance to make sure there's no strange stuff going on and as you can see this thing was rusted the spring was actually rusty so I had to get rid of the uh, some of the rust on the balance um, there it is there you can see the rust on there um, it's the best I could do on the hairspring uh, without ruining the hairspring so I was very careful to remove that um, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'll just set this down for a second we're going to get out a block here and I'm just going to rest this in the block so I can work on the uh, on removing the hairspring so I can find the right hole that the roller table fits into without too much pressure that fits in there nicely and then I will take the marker because I want to know where the spring gets sits the balance spring sits so the stud and what I do is I take a marker and that stud is right here and all you do is take and it's lined up perfectly with the balance so, so with the arm here so I'm just gonna dab this marker down see if that works yeah I dab that marker down a few times just so I can see that later and put the balance put the stud back exactly where it's supposed to be there we go so that's marked up put that away because here my creaking chair it has nothing to do with my weight I don't weigh a lot so now just for safety aspects what I'm going to do is cozy out the uh, there's a couple ways you can do this you can put the screwdriver in into the slot here and then twist it and lift up so sometimes that works sometimes it doesn't you can also I've seen that work nicely sometimes but and I'm going to try doing that because I don't want it to get underneath and damage that spring. So you just set it like this. You put your... Again, I play guitar, so I've said this a million times. So that's why my finger, fingernails are long on the one side. So you go down, twist. And that moves the uh, collet upward. I could probably twist left and twist right, but... I don't want to go down deep because I'll ruin the um, the spring. So it's almost off. So I think it is off actually. So let me just twist it one more time here. You guys can all sing. Uh, twist and shout okay so it's up now so now that I got it up I can go underneath it with a pair with a couple of um, with some screwdrivers and yeah, just try not to uh, shake anything too much here I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not I think I'll just go under this side here man this thing is low I 
I don't want to play around where the uh, where the hairspring uh, it's probably rusted on from before always keep pressure downward so you don't your screwdriver if it slips it goes down it doesn't go up and into the part let me even get a smaller screwdriver here going for the smallest one Ooh, this is a baby just don't like the way this is working here I don't want to uh, I just don't want to damage the hairspring because then I got to do more hairspring work. Which is no fun at all. Just trying to get the screwdriver jammed in underneath the uh, collet without slipping. This thing is stuck pretty good. Try twisting it again here. It was up on one side and it went down again. I should probably not videotape all this nonsense, right? Thing is, I'm on the side where the... Uh... There we go. There, it's just a matter of coaxing it. I think it did. There we go. So the hairspring is now off. And I just rest that down in the, into the uh, back of the case. Put that down there. So now I've got, there's the, um, the uh, balance staff, and the balance staff looks okay. It's, and then the roller jewel, or the impulse jewel, it, like I said before, it's at an angle. So hopefully this is the problem that I had, because when I held the pattern up, it kind of made some noise. So I'm going to have a peek at that. Yeah, the jewel's sideways. I don't know if you can see that, whether I can get a decent zoom in here. Is that going to zoom for me? Come on, zoom. Zoom. Give me a close-up. Give me a close-up. This is a Microsoft camera, so I think I need to spend like $500 and get a really good camera. Because this should zoom. Oh, there we go. Got a little bit of a zoom happening there. There you can sort of see it. There's the jewel on the top, and that's kind of sideways. So, so what I first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test this jewel and just see if it, when I grab it with the tweezers, is it moving at all? And. No, it's actually pretty steady. And if I look on the other side of the balance, just stick that in the hole, I'll be able to see the top of that jewel and how it's put in place. And it kind of looks like all the shellac is gone. I wonder if the jeweler crazy glued this thing in or something, because sometimes that happens. And um, I'm also going to uh, mark the top of this so I know where um, well the jewel's at 90 degrees so I should be able to remember that so it's at 90 degrees to the arms of the uh, watch so I'm going to just look really close here and see what's going on and then I'm going to punch off the roller table well I can punch that off right now while you're watching so I got my quickie, quickie roller table punch stuff here so this is as opposed to putting it into a staking set, so I'm just going to take this like that. I have to figure out which one of these it goes into. Is it this one or is it the other one? No, it goes into this one. And there it is there. So I can punch down on that. But what I don't want is for the pivot to bend. So I'm going to take 
a couple of pieces of paper here so if it when I punch it down it goes down it doesn't it doesn't the other side of that the the balance and the balance staff don't uh, hit the bottom so and I've got a bunch of punches here I just have to make sure I get the right size one I'm not too big or too small this one looks pretty good now just turn this around so you can see what I'm doing there it is there sitting in my handy dandy tool I can't remember where I got this from but and there is the punch the hole in his punch is pretty darn big I'm not sure if I can get a smaller one in there um, sometimes you can also get your staking set out and yeah, that's not too bad and just there we go so you give it a little bit of a pound now I'm going to do the I'm going to look at the pivots again and see if I did any bad stuff there and the answer is no so the pivots on the uh, jewel still look pretty good the pivots on the end there look pretty good so no no damage to, to the pivots this is a close-up the old wrinkly finger close-up and here is the here's the roller table again I'll just put it here there's a roller table with the jewel we just turn that around and I'll see if I can get a focus going on here I think if you got like a finger in there it focuses better for some reason there we go and there is the roller table and it's the world's worst focus so there's a roller table there if you see that and there's the jewel on the end right there and I'm just going to examine this to see if there's um let me grab the jewel here there it is sideways and I'm just going to examine that to see if there's any issues with the way it's sitting I know it's sideways so that's not good also when you're doing watch work repair work if you hold things wrong they tend to fling they go and they're gone there we go and there's the jewel as you can see that's not a bad shot there it's such micro work there we go so I gotta look at that jewel see how it fits in the table and see if it's the right size and then from there I can determine whether I need to put a new jewel in there so I'm gonna stop the video for two seconds and come back in a second so this is the jewel hole from the top I took a photo of it and it looks pretty round so I can't see any abnormalities here at all so it's a discoloration but I think that's due to the photo so that's looks pretty good so as you may or may not be able to see the uh, the jewel here um, is not the line here is not perp perpendicular to the um, circle here so it's not a tangent tangential to the circle here so this jewel is off so I'm going to just try to reset that and fix that all right this is really weird it actually looks like the moon shape the half moon hole smiley hole for the roller jewel or the impulse jewel the hole they cut for this jewel in the table is actually at an angle so this is a very weird situation so it's also got no shellac left on the top so I'm gonna leave the jewel where it is put a flake of shellac on the top and then heat it up and try to adjust. So in watchmaking there's a tool for everything so this little tool here is for grabbing the roller table and you apply heat on the other end of that and it um, and it's used for heating this up so you can basically um, put the shellac on and put the jewel in place so what you do typically let's see if I can do this with again on video being watched being gazed at 
I usually use my finger on the end here to push that like that so so I have these two fingers holding it and I've got my finger on the end so I got two fingers and a thumb and then this finger here opens up the jaw so that's the technique that I typically use and there's a slot in here that it goes into and you just tighten that up like that and that it's in there but I don't like the angle so I gotta adjust it and you have to make sure that that table is in there because you don't want it popping out because it pops out you could lose the whole thing and spend your weekend trying to find a part on the floor so you do that and you put it in like that now I think that's not in so yeah, it's in there it's always in on one side and not on the other so that's sorta of in but not really so again I'm gonna play with it until it feels like it's snug do not give up and it's a bit hard on the uh, back rear finger there I'm gonna readjust the finger find another spot my fingies sore has to fit in there nicely or you're going to get in trouble. Nope, that ain't it. I usually fit it in on one side, but the th darn thing rotates while I'm doing this, so... It's, I'm videotaping just to show you the struggles that sometimes you go through to... to do stuff in watchmaking. Alright, that looks like it's in place. Let me look at the end here that's in that mouth and that's in that mouth so here's what it looks like in in place Let's see if I can get that to zoom get my hand out of there maybe and there it is sitting there inside the jaws there we go that's a bit better so it's sitting there inside the jaws and it's got the um, the roller table is just there's a little slot on either side of those jaws and that's where the roller table fits so or sorry that yeah the roller table fits inside the jaws there you can see that there so that's it there so now what I'll do is I'll take a small flake of shellac I got enough shellac here to last 50 people 300 years of shellacking jewels and I'm going to take a little tiny piece of shellac and shellac the top of that because there's nothing holding that in place right now. It's probably shaking around and I don't even see it. So what I need to do there is set this up. So I'm going to put this down like this and get all the other parts of the way. That way your fingers don't squish stuff. And put that over here. And then what I need to do is get out a... I need a heat source for this. I typically use an oil, a lamp, so I'm going to just pause this and see if I can get a lamp. Alright, pour some uh, pure alcohol into the oil lamp, and then I just take the wick here on the lamp, and then stick the wick out a bit, and then dip that into the alcohol, like so, dip it in like that, and then wick it back into place like so and stick the rest of the wick in there I like to have the wick completely wet you need a wet wick life is about wet wicks see the movie John Wick and after I finish this I push, pour the alcohol back into the uh, container so and then I have to uh, screw this on like this and then I will light it up. I'm going to figure out how to light it up. And I'm going to have to point the uh, point the camera at the wick. Just hang on a second. Alright, now I'm going to light the uh, light this wick with the last there we go. I'm going to not blow that out. Put that over there. So that's lit. Now you can see the full desk here. So what I gotta do 
Um, I'll just let that burn for a few seconds. Is I take a very small piece of shellac. I have to put my glasses back on because I'm old man vision. I think <clears throat> I'm like not 90, 900 years old, by the way, but I still work for a living. So anyway, I got to break off a very small piece of shellac and. That's too small, I can't even see it. And then I have to put that shellac on top of that roller table. And once it's heated up, there it is there, that's not a bad little piece. So you just take the shellac out of the bag, and then you just snap it sideways. And see if that's the right size. It's tricky. Seal the bag back up. And I've got the world's smallest piece of shellac there, so I gotta switch to another pair of glasses. Now, hopefully I don't burn my head whilst I'm doing all this stuff. So I gotta get in nasty clothes here. And there's that piece of shellac. And what I'm gonna do is just put that on top of the roller table, so. And you got to put it right over the impulse roller, and it'll just suck right into the hole. So that'll secure the roller. Yeah, perfect. So that, then I hold that over the flame, and watch that because it'll melt. And I got to breathe sideways, or this whole thing is gonna go out and as I do this I can watch the shellac so the heat's transferred from that metal end through to the tip where the roller table is being held and I'll be able to see the shellac melting on the top of that impulse tool I gotta kind of talk sideways or I'll blow the flame out and that's oh, it's starting to uh, starting to melt. And I can see it turning into a ball. And then it'll go from there, it'll flatten. And it's starting to flatten. And it's flattening even more. And even more. And I think that could be it. No, it's flattening even more. Spread that out just a bit. And there we go. That should hold the jewel in place. Now let that cool down. And just look at the size of that flame. Blow that out. Now I just have to let this cool down for a few seconds because I don't want to burn the mat. I could put this on the um, on here. That's okay like that. So that I just secured the jewel in if that was loose and what was causing the issue. And now what I'll do because I don't want to waste my uh, alcohol. This thing evaporates so fast you can put it down on the mat here and within seconds the whole thing will evaporate. And then you want to just pour it back into the uh, container here and. What do they say? Keep it away from the rummies. So, there are people that drink uh, 
You see it's falling down my arm here, so this will smell like alcohol. This place will smell like a hospital in a matter of seconds. And there we go. That's the rest of it. And if I got any cuts in my thumb, it'll hurt like hell. So let's put that aside. Let's throw that back in just to get it out of the way. And this is called a spirit lamp. Ooh. That's in case there's any spirits around. So there, so that's done there. Put my spirit lamp back where all my tools are. Then come back, and this thing yeah, it's almost cooled down. It cools down pretty fast, and I know the shellac will be uh, pretty hard pretty fast. So that will, I can't fix the problem about the sideways jewel hole, because that is odd. I think I showed you a picture of that. The jewel's sideways in place, but the shellac had been moved, like completely removed. But there's no way of taking that jewel and moving it, because, like, like lining it up so it's tangential to the circle. Because the hole that was cut for the roller table was, in fact, cut wrong. So as I showed you on my phone earlier, see if I can find that photo. If you look at that, if you look at that, you can see that the hole, there's no gaps there. That's a perfect hole. And if you look at where the, uh, the groove is that prevent overbanking, that groove is off. And it the roll the tangent I think is off. Now I could increase the size of that small cut in the roller table. That little this little cut right here in the right here in the roller table. I could bring it up to around here, right? And I'm not sure if that'll help at all. So anyway, that's my situation. So I'd have to look at that again and see is there is there a way of because it is, if you go far enough on the, in the circle, it becomes, if you go far enough in the circle, it becomes tangential. So, like if I cut this over here, right, it becomes tangential, right? But I don't think the safety, the safety, uh, whatever that's called, the safety peg on the, on the uh, pallet fork was catching. I don't think that was a problem. The whole thing sounded a bit loose. So I don't think it was catching on there. I don't think that was the issue, so. I'm just going to re reassemble the balance because I believe the upper balance, uh, the upper balance jewel is fine, um, and I don't think I've got issues there. I'm going to have a quick look at it though, just in case. There it is. There's the ball of shellac sitting on the top, and it's just sitting. You can see it's kind of red. It's sitting above the uh, above the jewel, so the jewel's in place and the shellac's on top. So. Ready to rock and roll. I'm going to wind the watch up now and see if the... Uh, I replaced the mainspring on this. It was pretty tricky because I had to, to add a hook to it. I think I may have made a video on that. but So I wind it up like that and probably should use a toothpick. But I just touch the uh, pallet fork a bit and it should snap from one side to the other. And there it goes, snapping nicely. Yeah, that's good. Now, I don't... I'm going to have another look at that jewel on the bottom to make sure there's no gap there and shake problems there. But before I do that, I'm just going to drop this roller table down with the jewel side up. Just take it out of the mouth, drop it down. There's my tool. And just put this tool away. And... Uh, you can't really do the job without this tool, so if you're replacing an impulse jewel, you need to do that and use this nice little tool. I always put I always put duct tape on the bottom of my bags, that way the bag doesn't poke through, and it's in the tool in the bottom, put some pressure on it, so it saves it from poking through. Now, as you can see, I've got a USB camera pointing down at the lower jewel, and this is so I don't have to take everything apart again. 
And it looks as though there's no issue with the lower jewel. There's some bubbles in there, but that's from uh, the oil, which I can get rid of or something. But the jewel hole looks like it's intact, which is good. Doesn't look like there's a crack in the jewel. Um, this is a pretty touchy little camera, so it's uh, didn't get the focus on it right, but it works really well. So that is the USB camera, and there's the jewel hole there. So we'll see if uh, if there's any issues here at all. Um, I'm gonna move this around so it's centered. There we go. And there's the jewel in the center. And that's the lower jewel. So it looks round. It doesn't look like there's any issues. I think I, I remember looking at this already before when I reassembled the watch and everything looked fine. So it might just be the uh, could just be that friggin' impulse uh, jewel. That's the problem. So that looks fine. Anyway, and there's a uh, recording of the upper balance. A jewel hole which also looks round and fine and not cracked so don't think I've got an issue with uh, cracked jewel holes at all so it's all good I'm gonna put together the balance cock the balance the hairspring the roller table put this all together and then test it in the movement and see if it works so I set this up in my um, staking set so I need a anchor on the bottom and then I put that in and I've already aligned it with this punch here and then I have to grab the roller table to figure out what where it has to go here so let me just pull this off again for a second and I do recall I made a mark on one side there's the side I made a mark on so the jewel should fit that way which means it's fitting this way put that back in there like that and then I grab the roller table and I can place that carefully that didn't work that didn't work at all either so let me just grab this again you don't want to hold it tight because it will go flinging on you There we go. Place that in place like that. And I'm going to make this as perpendicular as possible. And sometimes if you look straight down the hole here on the top, you can actually see if it's perpendicular or not. And that isn't right there. So you can just look down the hole and just nudge it either way, left or right. And I'm going to just move it just a bit. I think that is probably as good as she gets right there. That's good there. And I need to pick a stake that's a good size that'll go over everything but not interfere with the jewel. So I do have stakes that have an opening for the jewel hole. I should pick one of those up. I got three, two other staking sets too, which is nuts way too many staking sets so this one here has got an opening here on the end I'm not sure if I can zoom in on this is that going to zoom for me I'm having more zoom issues this whole video is about zooming I think there's what the end looks like there so that little gap there is for the jewel to fit in so what I do is I put that on down like this and I just turn it and line it up and there we go and it shouldn't take too many taps to put that in place because it's friction fit so you be very careful you don't tap it too much that's good there and if I screw that up, I end up having to make new stuff. Let me lift that up here. Have a look at it. Yeah, that's 
tangential perpendicular and I can put the staking set away now and then I've got the next thing I have to do is um, I'm missing one of the anchors for this staking set must have fell down is I've got to put in put on and whenever you tip put your staking set away just loosen that up a bit and then turn it just so it doesn't get seized um, and I've got to get I get to take this here and I got to put in the hairspring so so I want to make sure the hairspring is lined up perfectly so I got to I'll bring the camera back down again so I can show you how that's done there we go that's better and what I need to do there is I need to find the appropriate hole now the the jewel is is on this side and I remember when I put the hairspring back on I marked it with a there's a hole that fits nicely right and I marked it on this side here and if I were to take the balance and say the balance goes on you just throw it around why don't you the balance goes on like this right which means the hairspring is on this side it doesn't it's not going to hurt the balance by dropping a little tiny bit but the hairspring's on this side like that and it's perfectly lined up so if I put that back I'm going to put my eyepiece on here if I put that back where it was before like so and that was nicely lined up and I'm going to pick a stake out to push it down not this one now this one is too big you just grab a the appropriate size stake for this and just push that down nicely so I got a stake here and be able to just push that straight down. It looks fairly aligned. I just heard it snap into place. So there we go. So now the hairspring's on, and all I got to do, I think Mark, the uh, genius watchmaker, said that if you put this the um, regulator with the opening pins if you put this all the way over to the other side like so like that then you can attach the hairspring on into the collet and then grab the spring and just lift it over so I'm assuming theoretically he's correct so if I if I were to just put this in like this I don't think this will go in I think I gotta turn it the other way so I'm not gonna watch I'm not gonna videotape me nudging the hairspring back in because that is a painful video to watch so it did work so I took this uh, lever and moved it all over like as far away from the stud as possible and I was able to touch the um, hairspring and put it inside the lever because it coils downward so if you go way over to the end and you hang it it's kind of out of the way and then you just tuck it in and then you use your finger to move the um, regulator back over again so that's all in place now and just make sure that the uh, jewel is in the right side correct side so everything is fine there so I'm just going to drop this into the watch now I haven't taken the movement out of the case here which is probably a bad thing to do but I'm gonna see if I can drop it in without doing that. Um, this is like don't do, don't ever do this. It says seen on TV, right? So do what I say, not what I do. So always take the movement out of the case when you go to put the uh, movement back in. Um, actually, I may even take it out. I don't know. Let me see if I could align the uh, align this up properly. 
and come in from this way, which means the fork, the pellet fork has got to be on this side, which it is. And I drop it in from this side, like so. Then I might be able to do this. See if I can just drop it in from here. Not sure if this will work or not. It will cause a catastrophe of unknown biblical proportions. Let's see if that works. There we go. So it's dropped in right now. Um, it's not screwed down, obviously. Um, so if I very, very bravely tighten the screw up, um, the watch should come to life. If it doesn't, then I've got more work to do. That's what always happens. So I just turn that, just put a little bit of pressure down, just a slight bit of pressure down so I can turn the screw in place and then I make sure as I tighten it that I'm not having issues here. Which means the uh, I'm not tightening the uh, balance is not at an angle. That's why doing it with the uh, the movement out of the watch is what you need to do and not what I'm doing right now. So is it do as I say not as I do? And there, it's taken away. Look at that. Running. And I'll tighten this up just a bit because I'm not sure if that's. So this was successful, but I don't still don't know if I put this in the upward position if it's going to die on me or not. Um, it's not dying. This could be good. I may have repaired the problem by giving the jewel some energy. So I wind it up a bit more here. See if I can get a decent amplitude out of this thing. There it's wound up. It looks like the amplitude's pretty good. And what I typically do again, this is going to be a long video, but what I do normally is I'll take a uh, a slow motion video of the movement. It's like I'm doing right now with my phone. And I'll do a slow-mo on it for like three seconds. And then I'm able to see what the amplitude is on it. So it's not great, but it's not bad. If you have a look at that. That's not not 360, but it's not also not 90. So slow there and it's almost 300 degrees which is pretty good so for an old beast so I might have fixed it and see if that runs upside down which is and it does so it runs this way it runs sideways it runs pennant up yep there it is it's running pennant up so I'll bet you any money that this stopped because the roller jewel was loose because it had no um, shellac on it anymore so that's that's the video so I'm gonna close this up actually I, I'm gonna set the timing on it first and then I'll close it up after so thank you very much for watching I know it's been a really long video today uh, and I'm not sure if I can get this much information on YouTube but I'm gonna put post this up and Hopefully enjoy the adventures of my watchmaking, and this was a very successful um, finish. Thank you very much.